Drew, I've just been feeling so blah lately, you know? I mean, I'm just thinking about the Bible and how it talks about how God was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if that's true, then why can't I hear him speaking? I'm sorry, I'll talk louder next time. What? Well, I mean, I wasn't saying anything, but I mean, I can talk louder if that'll help you. What are you talking about? Well, I wasn't talking then, but you couldn't hear me, so no, I'll, I'll no, talk louder. No, I'm talking about God. Why can't I hear God speak? Oh. Are you even listening to me? Yeah, I'm totally tracking with you. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, if that's true, then maybe you can tell me. Like, what is the problem? I mean, why can't I hear him like he was talking back in the day? Well, you can. I mean, that's what the Bible's for, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the Bible is awesome, but I just feel like I'm missing something. Like, it should be deeper or something personal, you know? I don't know. I mean, I've never heard him, but let me look it up. Look it you up? Just take a second. No, you don't just look it up. I mean, that doesn't no, even make it. Any... Don't distract no. me, please. What? Don't distract me, please. Distract you? Yeah, I can't thumb type and you talking. Hey, pizza's on sale. Oh, that makes total sense. I know, because it's a weekend. No, no, what you said about distracting. Hmm? I did? Yes, maybe that's what the problem is. Okay. I mean, we never, ever, ever just stop and listen. Well... No, you can't just stop. I mean, you've got to keep on living, right? And well, that's the whole point of life is yeah, to mean, live. Yeah, I you have to live. But I'm just saying, like, how do we expect to hear the Lord speaking unless we actually give him time to speak, right? <laughs> give him time. Yes. Well, let me think. I don't have any time. I might be able to pencil him in next week, Thursday no, 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 or something. No, 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 but... no. Let's just try right now, okay? Huh? Let's just stop what we're doing and let's just listen and wait for him to speak. Okay. Okay. Okay, that was great. I gotta go do laundry. No, 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 no. You can't just do it in two seconds, okay? Well, that was time, No, right? no, no, okay, like, look, just sit down, okay? okay? And All we right. are just gonna stop and give time to God and let him speak, okay? Okay. Okay. What are you doing? Waiting for God to speak. No, you're playing on your phone. No, I'm multitasking. It's fine. Oh, okay. Can I see that? What? Oh, that's great. Okay, so hey. what we're doing here is we're stopping what yeah. we're doing and we're listening for the Lord. That's what okay? I've been doing. Yeah, so well, let's try again. Okay, you can do this. Okay. Okay. Drew, what is your problem? What? This is taking way too long and it's not even working. If you're not going to take this seriously, I'm going to go do it somewhere else. Take what seriously? Me waiting for God to talk to me? Come on, I told you God doesn't speak anymore. Is it that God doesn't speak anymore? Or are there just more distractions keeping us from hearing him? Well, good morning. I am glad you're here for so many different reasons. And it's a great question to ask ourselves as we're in this series talking about how do we become rooted? How do we become established in, in God's love, knowing that God loves us, you know? And, and we're talking about hearing God, uh, like Lauren was saying, you know, speak to us today. And, and, and it's kind of a weird thing when we think of this concept of him speaking to us and, and stuff, you know, but it's what he wants because he does love us. He does care. I loved what Gavin said, you know, he, well, why would God care about me? you know, and, and that kind of stuff. And, and we forget that he does care and meet us exactly where we are at, you know, but, but we have to take the time to listen and be willing to listen. You know, when it comes to, it's kind of like this. Uh, I, I like a, um, Nicky Gumbel in his book uh, called Questions of Life. He says, what would it be like if, if you decided you were going to go to the doctor? You had two or three ailments going on. So you get to the doctor, you get in the office, however fast they get you in there. Doctor walks in and doc's like, hey, what's wrong? What brings you here to see me today? And you start, well, I got this pain in my wrist. If I turn like this, it hurts really, really bad shooting pain in the back of my throat. Every time I swallow, it just is like it's on fire. And there's something with my hip. I don't know what it is. And, and, and then all of a sudden you look at your watch and think, oh, I got to go. Thanks for listening, doc. And out you walk. What's your doctor going to say to you? He's going, wait, if you want me to help you, 
You need to pause. You need to stop. You need to listen to what I have to tell you about those ailments that you just spoke. And he says, that's what we do a lot at our time with God when we pray. Praying's a great thing, and a lot of us pray. But we do that. Oh, Lord, I need this. I have this. I want this. I'm hurting. Oh, thanks for listening, God. And out we go. And we don't stop and listen to God speak to us. And if we want to be rooted, if we want to be established in his love, we got to be able to do that. Because I know today, you know, people say, hey, if, if you know, if you're talking to God, you're spiritual. You know, if you pray to God, you're spiritual. But if God speaks to you, like Austin was saying, you know what? You're nuts. <laughs> you're crazy. But the thing is, God is still speaking to us today. And God still wants you to hear his voice today. In the Bible, you know, we always think that, yeah, God spoke. When you read through the Bible, you see God speaking all the time. But in modern times, it's like he's got laryngitis and he can't speak, you know. Uh, but there's conversations going on all around. I mean, you know, there's waves going through. We, you've heard this before, this illustration. There are phone waves going through right now. You can't pick up on those conversations. There's TV waves that are passing through us all the time, but you don't see the pictures of the TV. But if you have your phone and you pick up and make a call right now, you're in a part of a conversation. The waves are going through the air. We have no idea, but you do. Why? Or if you turn on a TV, you can catch what's happening on some station, and you're sitting there watching it, but we can't watch because we're not tuned in. And so the beautiful illustration for that is if you still want to hear God speak today, then you have to make sure you are being tuned in with God. And di communication is difficult. I gave that illustration last Sunday about communicating, you know, but we can. We can know his voice and he wants us. But the question is how? How do we hear his voice? Today we're going to look at John chapter 10. And I want to read this first verse in, in John 10, 10 that simply says this. The thief comes only to still kill and destroy. So stopping right there at the first part of that verse. Basically what God's letting us know, there is this enemy out there, we call him Satan, he calls him Satan, and everything, and he's the father of lies, and he's always communicating with us, speaking lies, he wants to destroy you. So not only do we have God speaking to us, we have this father of lies trying to destroy us speaking to us, so how do we know the difference between the two voices? Good question, glad you asked. Jesus says this, continuing on, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He wants us to have life. The Greek word there for life is zo, means he wants us to have it, uh, when it comes down to, he wants us to have it life to the maximum, to the maximum. So he says this, skipping down to verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Man, that'd make a great series, follow me. But they follow me. In verse 28, I give them eternal life, and, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Starting in verse 29, my Father who has given them to me is greater than them all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. So in the illustration, of course, Jesus is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. And no one can take us out of his hands. And, and, and God wants us to know his voice. And how do we know his voice? He and his son are one. Jesus and his father are one. So we get to know Jesus. And the result of that, again, is having this maximum life that God wants to bless us with. So there's three quick things I want to point out here in, in this passage. And, and you know, I, I think the youth today just illustrated in, in, in one sense, uh, one form or another for us. But number one, God wants you to know his voice. God wants you to know his voice. Why? Because God loves you. We forget how much he loves us, you know? Again, like I said, God doesn't have laryngitis. It's not like he's playing Where's Waldo, and you've got to painfully and stakenly sit there for hours on end trying to find him in, in this mess of this thing we call this world that's going on. He's, the scripture says God is not a God of confusion, and that he's speaking very clearly today. You know, the secret is, are we hearing? Are we actually doing the things that we need to to get tuned in? And so for some of you, this is kind of like educational, yeah, whatever. And for others of you, it's extremely important because you have decisions. You know, what am I going to do with my life? Where am I going to go to college? Is this the person I'm supposed to marry? Is this, what, with marriage, you know, I take this job, not take, you know, and you've got some important things in that. And the thing to remember is, yes, God cares for you. God loves you. And God does want to guide, lead, and direct you and speak to you. You just have to ask, are you tuned in? And you say, Dave, this is great. I hear this all the time. How's God still speaking to us today? Well, let me give you five quick ways that God is still speaking to you and I today. The first one is this. He's still speaking to us through the Bible, okay? I mean, that's his primary way that he speaks to us. Uh, and, that, and the other four ways that I'm going to mention here in just a few seconds, they always, always, I can't say that word always enough, they always have to line up with what the Scripture says. The Bible is this beautiful love letter you know, letter after letter, word after word from God about how he thinks about us, or how much he loves us, and everything. And a lot of the times today, 
You know, God gives us the signs, and that's great that he gives us the signs and stuff like that, and he speaks to us. But sometimes we're so busy looking for a sign when we just need to stop and look for a verse. You know, because the more you know the Bible, the more you're going to know God. And the more you know about the Bible, the more you'll be able to discern the voice of God as he speaks to you. You know, it's knowing the Bible in its context that help you. And, that, and again, some people, when they think about the Bible, they're not thinking about trust. Remember, this is a shepherd and sheep relationship that God's talking about. That's a trusting relationship. But today, I talked about this about four weeks ago. Today, we're into the big magic scene. And we even take this whole magic thought and wanting magic when we come to the Bible. You know, when we're looking for a sign, when we're looking, God, give me a word. And you probably heard this old, old illustration before. There's a guy that wanted a word from God. You know, so he just decided one day, God, I need your word. I want you to deliver it. So he takes the Bible and he goes, whoops, whoops, puts his finger down. Judas went and hung himself. No, that's not what he wants to give to me. Go there and do likewise. No, this can't be the word of God. You know, what you're about to do, do it in a hurry. You know, I mean, that's not how what we're talking about. But that's what we want. We want God to work this magical way with us when it comes down to that thing. And the whole truth about the scripture is there's this whole scripture that God speaks to us. And looking at the scripture at a whole, understanding it at a whole, and that in hearing God's voice. So the Bible is the first way he speaks to us still today. The second way is through authority. And, of course, the Bible is our ultimate authority, but there's others in authority, you know, that he speaks to us. Maybe it's an elder, maybe it's a pastor, uh, you know, and when it comes to that aspect, I mean, it, just like, again, what the youth at CIY experienced, you know, these people, maybe you've ever sat in an auditorium. You know, there's just been a couple people, maybe there have been a couple thousands of people, and all of a sudden, who's ever speaking starts speaking, and, and you're like, has he been listening to my phone calls? Has this person been peering in my house? Have they been spending the last six months with our family? Every word they're saying are words that have been spoken. And it's like out of the 50,000 you're with or five that you're with or whatever, it's like they're talking directly to you, you know, because and they're describing your life because, well, that's how God works sometimes with people, you know, when it comes to that aspect. You know, and that's just the Holy Spirit, God speaking through you through that kind of authority. And there's all different kinds of authorities in our life. Whether we like it or not, the government is an authority, you know. It's God's will for us to obey the law of the land. So the simplest illustration that I can come up with that irritates me the most is, you know, like you're out on 55, and what's the speed limit on 55? There we go, 70. All right, I was scared there for 70 mile an hour until you get down to a certain spot, then it goes to 65, but we don't pay attention to that, you know. But the law of the land is 70 miles an hour, so God says obey that authority, that law of the land, which is? You decide. It's 70 miles an hour, you know. If you live at home, your parents, your authority. You know, you have a, you have a job. Your boss is your authority. You know, if, if you're married, your spouse is your authority. And i got to stop right there because any time I say that with it, I always get in trouble with the ladies. Yes, we know what Ephesians 5 says, Dave. We get beat up with it all the time. Wives, submit to your husbands. And that is a biblical command from God. But we forget, men, and the church forgets what follows right after that, which is... And husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for them. So what that means is, Melinda, me, I'll, I'll use our relationship here, you know, uh, when we're married and, and stuff like that, in that context it's put there, Melinda and I, I am to love Melinda so much that she knows that I'm willing to lay my life down, meaning... I, I don't just have selfish interest. I have selfless interest. So when we come to a crossing roads and she wants to go left and I want to go right and there has to be a decision made, she knows I love her so much that when I'm going to make that decision, I'm going to make it not selfish what David Beals wants, but I'm going to make it selfless what's best for us all. And because I have loved her and demonstrated that kind of love for her, she's willing to sit there and say, to that kind of authority I can submit. Does that make sense? Because the words submit and authority are not popular in, in our culture today, but that's how God has set that up with it. And we are to be together mutually and work together through that aspect on it. And, and so God will speak to you through authority, through government, through parents, through pastors, through employees. And here's the thing, today... If you have authority, you know, and that you want to make sure, if you're the one that's in authority, you want to make sure that you're under God's authority, okay? If you're a parent, if you're a leader, if you're a boss, whatever it is, if you can't be under authority, then you shouldn't be in authority. The third thing, the way God speaks to us is through godly others. Godly others. The optimal word there, of course, is godly. 
you know. The truth is, w when we're making life decisions, you can find somebody who's going to agree with you, okay? <laughs> you got a big decision you want to make in your life, and you go over here, and there's these 10 people that are godly people, and they're all saying the same exact thing to you, and they've never spoken to each other, and then you come over here, and you find this one that agrees with you. <laughs> you know, we can always find one person, you know, that agrees with what we want to do. We can always justify what we want to do and what we want to hear. And you say, well, David, how do I know if they're truly godly people? Great question. Are they following Jesus? You know, I mean, have they given their life to Christ? You know, surrendered their life to Christ? Are they following Christ? Do they put him first? Are they coming to church? Are they reading the Bible? Are they praying? Are they trying to do, you know, the values that God has laid down with it? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 says this, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Are they humble people? You know, you want to find humble people, you know, who, you know, are following Christ. People who care more about you than your feelings. People who are willing to speak the truth to you in love, whether you like it or not. There's a great verse that'd probably be good for us to memorize. And the younger you are, the better it is to, to know this truth. It's, it's in Proverbs 13, 20 that says this, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. So if you want to be wise, if you want to be godly, if you want to know the voice of God, then live your life with people who are wise and godly, you know, who know the voice of God. See, the Bible tells us you become like those that you hang around with. So if you ever find yourself thinking, man, my friends are a bunch of idiots, <laughs> be careful. You just threw yourself in that pot right there, okay? So when it comes to that, you know, put your place where you get regularly godly counsel from people who love God, you know, and love you, and God will speak through them. And the fourth way is through still small voices. Still small voices. What does that mean? Every once in a while, the Holy Spirit, you heard a testimony of it today here, a couple of them. You know, if you're follow, he will prompt you. He will nudge you. He will speak to you, you know. Maybe you're going through the day, and, and, and I don't know, somebody comes to your mind, and you just can't shake it. They're just constantly there on your mind. You know, should I call this person? Should I check on them? Should I pray for them or whatever? And, and you know, and, and you're thinking, okay, well, Dave, that's great. But how do I know that's not that voice from that person that wants to still kill and destroy? How do I know that's from God when it comes to that, you know? So when you get these prompting, these nudges, these speaking to you, talk to other godly people. What does the Bible have to say about it? Ask someone in authority of your life. Run it through the grid of how God speaks to you. Because, my friends, we do, we do lie to ourselves. We do try to rationalize. Have you ever realized that? I don't know about you. But understand this. When you rationalize, you know what you're doing? You're telling yourself rational lies. Okay, so, you know, nobody's going to lie to David more than David. So we can all be self-deceiving. There's an old proverb. It's not in the Bible, but I still think it's good and it's true. The eye cannot see the eye. So we need other people that are going to speak the truth, like I said, in love, that look into our lives and make sure we're not deceiving ourselves. And the last way that God speaks to us in our life is through circumstances. You ever heard the phrase, open door, closed door? We use it a lot and you know, it's Christian, oh, God opened that door. God closed that door. You know, we use it a lot in the church. And it's, it's, it's biblical to a sense, but I think it's the most abused language that we use in the church today because we're misinterpreting what's happening. It actually comes from a time in the New Testament in Paul's life, you know, that it happened to him. And people take it out of context because usually what we mean is when the door is open, oh, God opened the door. We, what we're saying is, well, that's an easy way. So it's real easy for me to go that way because God opened the door. So life is well and life is easy. And if it's a hard hard decision or a hard, no, that's God closing the door because God doesn't want me to do something hard when in fact, usually the door that God opens for us can be a very difficult door. I mean, think of what God asks us to do. Love your neighbor. Pray for your enemies. Is that easy to do? No. Forgive them? No. Some of these things that we know that God wants us to do, the doors that he opens, you know, it's, it's difficult things. But we sit there and say, oh, God, close that door, you know, because that's just too difficult. God would never, ever want me to do that, you know. God would never want me to say that, do that, get involved, no way, you know, and that kind of stuff. And, and so it's a closed door. And we use that, like I said, we abuse it. I sometimes, you know, <laughs> I remember when I was in California, had a, had a young man come in and sit down and was talking to me, needed a job and, and, and uh, um, just, just good heart and everything. And he was using it. He was like, Dave, I'm just, I'm sitting at home waiting. I know God's going to open the door for me. Just give me that job and I'm ready to walk through it. And I'm like, you know, maybe what God's trying to tell you is, you know, fill out a resume. You know, go to the place, knock on the door, hand it to somebody. Nope, I just know one day the phone's going to ring and he's going to open that door and hand me that job. 
That's not how God works, you know. But he does work through circumstances in our life to guide, lead, and direct us. And we run that through all the different, talk to godly people. Is this circumstance, is what God's saying? Is this a door he wants me to go through, pray about? What does the Bible have to say about it when it comes to those things, you know? So that's how God speaks to us when it comes to that. Because why? Because God wants us to hear his voice. But the second thing I want us to understand, the second point is when it comes to that, is to know the voice of God, you have to know the shepherd. You've got to know the shepherd. Spend time with God. Listen to the voice of God. I've been married to Melinda next month. It's going to be 28 years. And Melinda says these three words to me all the time. I love you. Aww. But you know what? Those three words mean, can mean different things all the time. Amen, husbands? Melinda will look at me sometimes and say, I love you. And what she's really saying is, you're an idiot. <laughs> you know? She'll be looking at me saying, I love you, you fool. You know? Sometimes she's saying, I love you, meaning, would you hold me a little tighter? I love you. I'm a little scared right now. I love you. Why'd I marry you? <laughs> you know, and I know those, I can tell you exactly what every single time she says, I love you, I know exactly what to mean because I know more than her voice. I know the tone and everything else that comes with her. Why? Because I've spent over 28 years with this woman and so I know her. And so the more you're in church, the more you're listening you know, to messages, the more that you're around godly others, the more that you're studying the Bible, the more that you're memorizing, the more that you're talking to God, you're going to get to know the shepherd and discern his voice. And remember, the shepherd cares for you. We have this picture in the Western world of shepherding that's a little different. That I don't know that we understand the first century shepherding. You see, the, the, the shepherd of the first century, well, the shepherding today, we think of like sheepdogs and everything. You ever seen those? I mean, it's cool to watch demonstrations and how those work, and the dogs just go and hurt them. It's amazing. But what are the dogs doing? They're barking and terrifying the sheep to get them in a direction. That's not the shepherding that God's talking about when he talks about how he is our shepherd. In the first century, when a shepherd would be there, you've heard illustrations before how they know the voice, but one of the first things they do when a lamb was born is they take the lamb, and for several days, the shepherd will carry them on, that lamb on its shoulder and walk around. Why? So the lamb gets to know the shepherd, gets comfortable, and recognizes the shepherd's voice, and then he puts him back in the flock or her back in the flock, and, and, that, and then they're able to follow because they become comfortable with that. So if you want to know the voice of God, you have to spend time with God. And the more time you spend with him, the more you'll be able to recognize him, which leads me to the last point. And, and, and it's, it, it's this, when it comes down to it, it's talking about the specifics. Because people want to know the specifics when it comes to God's life. And I understand this, but I want to understand, understand this, you know. If you do the general things God asks of you, then you'll know the specific things you're supposed to do. If you and I, if we're doing the general things that God wants us to do, then we are going to know those specific things in our life. Because there's a bunch of things that we all know is the will of God that are specific things. How many of you know it's God's desire that we meet together corporately in worship? How many of you know it's God's desire that you read his word, study his word, and memorize his word? How many of you know that it's God's will that you pray to him and, 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 that, and, and that you pray and intercede for others? That's, that's, that's the general thing. We all know that there's things like this that it's the general. And the more we do the general things, then when it comes down to the specific, we're going to understand the specific decisions that we have to make on our job and on our marriage and, and, and all those other kind of things when it comes time to do that. So that brings us right back to the beginning. Right back to the beginning. The worship team is going to come up here and they're going to continue to allow us to worship this God that has and loves you. This God that has a message. This God that wants to, to speak to you. This God that is still willing to speak to you today. We're going to be able to worship him here. But it brings us right back to the beginning. Jesus came so that we can have life and we can have it to the full. We can have it to the maximum in that. And if we're going to experience that, we have to learn to recognize his voice. And the first step you take in learning to recognize his voice is... Doing what Chet said at the very time up there. This comes that point, Chet. I've got to say it again. This is when you commit your life to Christ. That's the first step. You just say, you say, I want to be in a relationship. Because, you know, if I don't want to be in a relationship with you, you know, if I don't want to hear, or I just won't talk to you. I won't do anything. I won't hang around you. I won't be with you. Then I'll never know who you are or anything about you. But if you really want to know God and have God speak to you and guide, lead, and direct you, you've got to make a commitment to step into a relationship. He's already made the commitment to come before us through his son, Christ. To give us his son, Christ. Now he says, if you really want this relationship, if you really want to walk with me, if you really want to be with me, then I need you to step forward and receive the gift of salvation through my son, Jesus Christ. And when you do that, then that Holy Spirit and that anointing will be there, and I will guide and I will walk. And you continue to do those general things, and in the specific, I'll be there. So as we're going to be worshiping, we're going to take a time where we're also going to be having communion. 
and during this time while you're seated and that there'll be communion around at the, at the two back tables and the one very back one back there when you're ready as we take this time we remember we reflect on what that gift of God's son Jesus Christ and what it means to be in a relationship with him let God's spirit speak to you do you hear God's voice if you're a Christian have you heard God's voice in a while why not you know, if you're not, do you want to be guided and led and direct by him? It's only a decision you can make. If, if, if there, as you're sitting here, let, let his spirit speak to you. And when you're ready, you can get up and partake in communion and come back. And you can either sit down or you can stand and continue to worship with that. But if there's a decision you want to make, if there's prayer you need for your life, come on up. I'll be up front up here if you feel comfortable with that. If not, see me afterwards. If there's somebody with me, keep coming. We have other leadership here and, and that. But, you know, come on up here. And, and then we can pray with you and pray for you and be there for you. But let's go before God, who loves us so much. Father, thanks for this time. Thanks for the beautiful testimony. Thanks for speaking to the youth the way that you did this past week and continuing wanting to speak to us today, tomorrow, and every day. Thank you for that relationship you want for us and that relationship you want to have with us. And thank you for your presence that, Father God, you are here. As Austin said, Father God, you are present. And we thank you that we could gather together as we have this morning corporately and, and experience that and give you the praise and honor and glory you deserve so much through worship. But now, Father, we just ask as we take this time and remember, give thanks and celebrate your son Christ and what he's done for us. Father, your Holy Spirit speak to our heart. Help us to understand, Father God, that relationship you want. Help us to hear you right now, Father God, the still small voice, whatever it may be, Lord. Thank you for this time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.